it literally is like America bad, America bad, America bad, America bad. Like there's nothing, there's nothing beyond that. You know, any any argument from chat, he yells for five minutes, America bad. Like that's it. You know, it's it's juvenile. I, it's like an unwillingness to critically engage with the complexities of the world. America operates on the boundaries of self-interest. That's it. It's that simple. The side that's trying to stop the genocide, it's done. It's very obvious. If people start blowing up like random parts of America because there's ammo depots there, like what are we talking about? You can't what? do that. You are the United States of America. You're like seven, 8,000 miles away from this area. And you've decided like, I'm going to blow up your weapons depot. Like this makes no sense. Just did it, Bubba. The Houthis attacked international maritime trade. It, it, the, huh? I, I feel like every time I hear this get described, the, the, the impression I get from the description is that the U.S. like, for no reason, just moseyed on 10,000 miles east to like, bomb Yemen. L like, nothing happened prior to that. I know, I know it makes a lot of people's dicks hard to think like, oh, they're doing this and we're showing our might it does, towards yeah. a population it's of true. people that we had, had, uh, uh, been doing gen, we would be, we had been genociding basically and not directly genociding, indirectly genociding with a regional proxy. Like we outsourced our genocide of the, of the Yemeni population to Saudi Arabia. Okay. And now we're here like, to do it, it ourselves. It blows my we're mind that like America's champion this kind of thing. You get no benefits from this dog. You're not even, they're not even doing this for your security. It, they're doing this to flex for Israel, basically. Dude, man, fuck. God damn it. You guys are going to end up making me f sympathize with the like liberals in the UK, who like the Labour Party's anti Semitic or whatever. I, dude, come on. Holy shit. I, I really do, there's like a horseshoe theory thing or whatever, where there's like a group of people who understand that America is the big dog here and that Israel is like, we keep around and we defend because of like a regional proxy wedge against uh, Iran and like other stuff or whatever. And then like on both the far right and the far left, there's the belief that Israel is actually calling the shots, you know? Um, I, I, I don't know. It's very frustrating. Where lefties just incredibly unsure. Well, it's just it's it's just that lefties can't do foreign policy anymore. They used to be able to, you know. So it's additionally odd when Americans are like, like hundred well, years they're ago. They're going to find out why we don't have healthcare, and it's like, bro, you really think that's chill? You just said it's cool that you don't have healthcare because America gets the aid and abet in genocide. Like, you think that's a aid and abet in genocide by d attacking depots that were firing drones and missiles at civilian vessels in the Red Sea? Ah, God, it's just yeah, yeah, yeah. Right now, that is what you would be saying. But when America's doing it, it's like, no, nah, actually, you don't get it, dog. This is, you know, I'm doing profound foreign policy analysis here. Okay, mm -hmm. let me tell you, I somehow always magically find the the exact triangulated position that uh, America is good. Actually, they're trying their best. You see, two of some of the worst genocidal superpowers historically come together and like start bombing Yemen, a country that they were, you know, dishing out their regional actors to do a genocide in. Shortly after that genocide is, is uh, ended, that blockade is ended. And you're like, I think the guys that were doing the genocide are the... Speeches like this are meant to sound good to lefties because they appeal to the vibes that people on the left are sympathetic to, you know? There's a bunch of, like, vague allusions to the imperial, uh, colonial, and genocidal tendencies of the U.S. and the U.K., which exists, certainly. That's why the vibe impression works. The truth of the matter is that this is purely about international maritime trade and preci precision strikes were taken against Houthi targets. This has literally nothing to do with genocide. It has nothing whatsoever to do, even with the broader population of Yemen. It's a specific response to a specific set of behaviors. But this sounds convincing because it's like gesturing vaguely at this like, oh, wow, two imperial nations coming together to attack a country that's been the victim of a genocide funded by the United States, which that's not wrong. That's true. But it also doesn't speak to the actual truth of the matter. You know, it's it's focusing on the points that are irrelevant to distract you from the ones that are relevant.
which you know it, it doesn't actually answer anything it doesn't it doesn't resolve anything or give you any understanding of the conflict there's a reason why so many of the people in chat who have questioned me on this seem to be coming from a place of literally no knowledge you know there are a lot of people in chat basically everyone i've seen on twitter or in my own chat who disagrees with me seems to disagree with me on illegitimate grounds not to say that there's no way to legitimately disagree with me you can that's fine but a lot of people who disagree just don't seem to know what the is going on or they don't seem to understand what maritime trade is so as a consequence of that it's like you don't even have the grounds to disagree with me you could know more to disagree with me but you don't know enough to disagree with me um and, and i feel like a lot of these people are hassan viewers <laughs> i don't know like it's vibes based analysis you know uh, uh, uh like it's not to say you know there's no validity to bringing up the fact that uh, America, you know, participation in genocide, assisting Saudi Arabia in the, like, uh, you know, many dead in Yemen, that kind of thing. But, like, by qualifying only those points, you, you're misleading people on the actual cause and, like, consequences of this conflict. It's very, it's very much like an aesthetic position. It's very, it's very aesthetically uh, charming, you know? It's very aesthetically, uh, you know, compelling. The good guys here, I think, yeah. Genuine question, why does everyone complain about the supposed America is bad takes you have? Isn't there enough proof to show that they are bad? Yes, because they, you know what the reason why? See, that's it. That's the vague, that's the, that's the vibes take that I'm talking about right there. Why are people contesting your belief that America bad? Isn't America bad? Like, this has nothing to do with what's being discussed, but like, that's the important aesthetic point that they feel the need to constantly reaffirm, you know? Uh, it's, it's like a, a, a big, like, like drum circle where everyone's chanting, like, well, you know, America bad, America bad. Like, you have to remind yourself always, hey, talking point A, talking point B, okay, 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 but America bad, right? Yeah, America bad, America bad. <laughs> Again, it's vibes, it's aesthetics. My people get very mad at that because liberals fancy themselves to be like intellectually superior to the dumb hogs that they want to desperately not identify and this and this by the way this is like the lefty like Fuck you mom and dad aesthetic that so many of the young viewers in hassan's chat like they love the idea that the discourse that's happening right now is lefties wisely proclaiming america bad and liberals hearing that and going N no no L Amer america good uh -huh. as if liberals haven't since the iraq war uh been doing the whole like uh you know uh, america's a shit country actually bit like the discourse they're on is literally decades out of date liberals have been performatively indicating that america is a fallen country full of dipshits and rednecks for decades now there's a highly classist element to it in a lot of cases you know um, the reasons why they say America bad may not be the same ones that lefties do, but like the idea that liberals are like balking at this, it, it, like it's they're 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 like waging a shower war. They're having a battle in their minds, you know, uh, against the liberal that is their mother and their father, which is you know again not relevant to the situation in Yemen. I feel with, but when it comes to foreign policy, if you are pro American global dominance, you are identical to a hog. That's it. See, that's it. If you if you think that uh, piracy of international maritime trade is bad, it's because you're pro-American dominance. Never mind the fact that it's an international coalition and the UN Security Council backed the vote prior uh, without the dissent from Russia or China. They could have said no. They could have ruled no, but they didn't, you know? But no, this is America doing it. The only reason America and the UK are the ones handling it is because A, the UK wants to buddy along because they want something to do. You know, their country's dying, why not? And America just has so many boats, you know? Like, choo-choo, big boats. The difference between a hog and a liberal is that on its foundations, they still come from the same place, American exceptionalism, and America has to be the world police. Just the hog says more slurs while conducting This is such, like... Like, I'm five and this is smart leftist analysis. Yeah, that's the difference between liberals and conservatives. Yeah, that's that's true. You know, I mean, neocons are liberals and there's an analysis to be made there in terms of social perspectives. But right now, neoconservatives are the vast minority in government. Like the the conservatives in government are fascist aligned, which means that they're not like these. The, like th this isn't the. The, 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 the far right in American government is making the same talking points as the left. They're doing the like fake isolationist thing about Biden starting another war in the Middle East. You know, like th this analysis just doesn't work. It doesn't translate. Self and making an argument.
The liberal, on the other hand, that is not a hog, a Democratic Party voter, still has the same interests, still wants the same things to happen, but they don't say it's it. just not like by ho again, by hog, do we mean neocon like John McCain type? Because if that's the case, I think there is some validity to the analysis. But if by hog we mean like MAGA Republican, then no, the material interests differ significantly there. It's vague on purpose. Yeah, it is vague on purpose. It like it doesn't mean anything, you know? He uses hog as interchangeable with neocon. OK, but like who's a neocon anymore? When the last time when was the last time you saw neocon <laughs> you know what well, i i like if he's referring to republicans broadly this is just factually incorrect as many slurs they think it's like kind of mean and and rude to to you know uh, champion genocide while simultaneously also uh, saying that you're championing genocide what, what does this mean i don't even what does this mean liberals think it's mean to be pro-genocide but they say they're pro what, what is this vague vague vibe based this doesn't mean anything it's a, it's a kinder, gayer imperialism. The U.S. and the U.K. are now bombing, bomb, bombing, bombing Yemen so that the precious Israeli occupation regime can continue its genocide of Gaza and the Western media and political class are cheering it on and celebrating the same ones who demanded every Asian on Earth do everything for Ukraine. I guess the analog is basically like, what would you, what would we do in this situation? You know what I mean? Like, America already did this against Russia to a certain degree, what Yemen is doing. We, we engaged in piracy and civilian vessels and maritime what but if like estonia tried wait 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 can you qual wait can you qualify that what we, we did i wasn't aware of that we did that whether we just started randomly attacking ships somewhere in the ocean because of russia did we do did we do that i had to do this to russia right as russia was like blowing up ukraine everyone was celebrated everyone be like oh thank god there's someone out there that's like doing the righteous thing do a what are, are we talking about preventing Russian military ships from leaving the... What? Estonia... Blockade Russia? What, what are we... I don't even know what we're referring to. I'm, Estonia blockade Russia. I don't, I don't know what we're referring to. The closest thing that happened was a Georgian ship refused to refuel a Russian military ship. I have no idea what he's talking about. I have no idea. I genuinely, I'm like baffled. I have no clue what he's talking about here. He means sanctions. Well, that's all we're talking about. Yemen can sanction Israel. I don't care. <laughs> sure. Yeah. For all the good that'll do. A poll of Americans tonight. Ask them if they know who the Houthis are, where they live, why we are bombing them, and whether the president has the authority under the constitution to bomb them. Go. Yeah. 30%. I'm not contesting the idea that Americans are brain dead. GOP voters support bombing Agraba, the city from Aladdin. America has a ton of blockades on countries that aren't... It's Agraba, if I recall correctly, not Agraba, Hassan. It's not at war with, yeah. The statement from Biden on the airstrikes in Yemen, Gaza, of course, not mentioned once. Statement from President Joe Biden on coalition strikes in Houthi-controlled areas in Yemen. Today, at my direction, U.S. military, together with the United Kingdom, and with support from Australia... I, I have to say, it is very validating for me to watch Hassan do the same thing that I do, where he gets tired of reading enormous blocks of text, so he just kind of slurs his way through it and skips, like, you know, whatever he can to get the point across. I sympathize with that unironically. Reading a bunch of text is so annoying. ...in Canada and the Netherlands successfully conduct their strikes against a number of targets in Yemen used by Houthi rebels to endanger freedom na of navigation in one of the world's most vital waterways. The strikes are in direct response to unprecedented Houthi attacks against international maritime vessels, vessels in the Red Sea, including the use of anti-ship ballistic missiles for the first time in history. These attacks have endangered U.S. personnel, civilian mar mariners, and our partners, jeopardized trade, and threatened freedom of navigation. So why are the Houthis doing this? this? Is a question I would love to ask. Like, why are they... In so here's a question, by the way. Why would a presidential statement on a strike on Yemen include the Houthis' disingenuous explanation for why they're randomly attacking civilians. Like, if a bunch of terrorists took over a bank and started killing civilians, would the would the police statement need to say, like, by the way, here's a paragraph of how uh, they're saying they're doing this for peace in the Middle East, you know, and like, let's dedicate some time to explain how this is actually like a sincere and genuine effort on their part to, you know, bring about. I don't think that would happen. I think all, all he really needs to do is explain what the military strike is and why it's being done, which he did. You know, I don't know why he would dedicate any time to like providing their justification for piracy. That doesn't really seem like his priority. Implementing a blockade. Why has America killed more than they have? 
You can't just meme away from the Houthis have done. They've been trying to topple the Yemeni government for 30 years, of which uh, had normal relations in the Middle East. Why aren't we talking about Iran sponsoring Shia militant groups all over the Middle East to rise up against Sunni governments, which are much more in favor of normalization with Western powers in Israel? Not that Sunnis are innocent in killing Shiites, but this is a 1,000-year conflict that's not going to change. I'm done. I can't do this. What do you mean, dude? Normalizing with Western powers and... He didn't really say much about the Biden statement apart from like why didn't biden give the steel man of the houthi terrorism argument in israel what are we talking about hello are you familiar with western powers in israel and what they're doing oh oh i'm sorry are we impugning that chatter for talking about irrelevant shit while invoking the saudi arabian genocide of yemen in a conversation about the current like red sea piracy discourse you know you have america's boot shoved so far up your ass that it's coming out of your mouth when you have this is like every response right like this is like every like anytime any like like anytime anyone in chat does that it's like this sort of like performative two-minute hate where it's like you are pro-america you are pro-america which i'm sure a lot of the people he says this are but i feel like this is all he does you know this conversation you just immediately take it for granted like your standard of modernity is how well they get along with two imperial powers in the region two destabilizing forces in the region that have killed more than anyone else that is unimaginable i know it's is he unironically arguing that the houthis represent more stable governance in yemen than the original yemeni government does well i think he actually is arguing i think he's legitimately saying like Stake well the houthis are more anti-west than the previous yemeni government or the current i guess technically yemeni government so that means that they're actually better all right me 11 days to yell at a chatter but god damn what a listen okay child marriage and slavery are actually very stable and authentically middle eastern uh cultural practices all right so actually by promoting those the houthis um are more authentic representatives of the interests of the yemeni people than uh than the previous government a f idiotic approach to the subject dude that's insane that's your standard Wow, I can't believe how good Saudi Arabia is in the region because of how aligned they are with Western powers in Israel, even though they're doing a genocide in Yemen or they conducted it. If this is your standard of who's a good operative in the region, then yeah, you are morally righteous, except this is an incredibly idiotic way to assess the situation. Didn't the chatter say Iran, not Saudi Arabia? I don't know. How else is there going to be stability? Brother, please. He sounds I like beg Charlie of you, from It's Always Sunny. Just when take he gets a mad. deep breath and really think about your output here. You are a. Okay, this is going to be like a long bit on the chatter thing. It's probably going to happen more, too. Hold on. About them when you can use them as a talking point against whatever foreign adversary of leadership do not have the balls to take a stand against. Oh my God. Listen, the Houthis may use child soldiers or force women to be brides, but they aren't against the Western hegemony. Brother. Why do you think this is a good talking point? Okay, wait. There are responses that you could make to this, Hassan. I just want to see you make them, okay? I want to see you make these talking points, all right? Like, so here, here's a good example, right? Hamas, in terms of like the average political prescription of a member of Hamas, is significantly more reactionary than your average person in Israel, you know? The difference really is a matter of access to power. Hamas is a weak insurgent group, and uh, Israel is a fully militarily industrialized modern nation, meaning that fascist tendencies in Israel are much more capable of being acted upon. Nonetheless, I defend uh, uh, the Palestinians and even the idea of Hamas like engaging in defensive action on the uh, behalf of Palestinians because they're in a position where a, their reactionary tendencies are a consequence of the material forces in the region that are not their fault, like what Israel has done to them. And B, it's kind of like a what alternative situation, right? How far has diplomacy gotten the Palestinians? So I think you could legitimately say, look, the Houthis do a lot of bad things, but instability in the region usually tends to promote fascist strongmen and religious zealots. And those are all things that Houthis have used to like construct their power base. You know, the Houthis have sort of like desperately cobbled together a bunch of political and religious prescriptions as a way of gathering together as much support as they can in the more populated regions of Yemen. And a lot of those are negative because they've had to appeal to like conservative traditions and more like rural regions. And that means shit like slavery and child soldiers to an extent, because those like hierarchical tendencies get reified in the Houthi government. But all of these things are a consequence of regional instability that we've contributed to. That, by the way, what I just did right there,
There, that's a correct argument. I did it. I did it. I did right. Did you see? Did you see me do that? Right there, I did it. That was a response that Hassan could make right here. That would be like a, I guess like a valid one here. Okay, so let's 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 see what he actually says. I mean, maybe it will be that good. I just I feel. We in Afghanistan directly align with boy f and allowed it to continue in Afghanistan. Do you care about boy f and putting an end to boy f No, you don't. Shut the f <sighs> uh, Appeal to hypocrisy. Okay. Um, there is there is half of a legitimate argument here, but like, I think the person here would probably denounce the boy f from the ANA. I I'm just guessing here, but I feel like the person in chat would probably, if given the opportunity, say, yes, I think that the systemic of children by the ANA in Afghanistan was bad. That, that's just a guess of mine, but I, I could be wrong. But yeah, just it's just a weak appeal to hypocrisy. Shut the f*** up! You don't! You don't! My point is always, it doesn't matter if they're good or bad on the same boundaries that you are trying to apply to them. Hold on, we have a mad chatter. Uh, uh, their first message in chat, I feel. You justify the USA attacking Houthi targets in Yemen by saying the USA warned them to stop blocking ships in the Red Sea. So again, they're not blocking ships in the Red Sea, they're randomly attacking civilian ships. Not blocking, like they don't really have the equipment to block, you know, they just fire missiles and drones. Israel is committing a genocide. Really? I'm just hearing about this. And your country, ex sorry, I should, I should include the swears. Israel is committing a genocide and your country explicitly supported Israel and preemptively condemned South Africa's case against Israel at the ICJ. That was all in caps. I can't believe you're surprised by the fact that leftists are complaining the U.S. is taking action against Houthis in Yemen. You're honestly so retarded. Fuck you. Wait, what was even the argument there? Wait, wait, you didn't even make an argument. You just described something happening in the Red Sea, then said America's pro-Israel and is doing bad things, and then said, and then you left. Ah, we've been visited by a Hassan Chatter. What was the argument? There? I, I, I agree. Yeah, I, like, people... <laughs> People, people love to do this with me. They'll be like, um, they'll be like, bro, you'll say anything to defend Israel, not knowing what I'm known for. For those of you who don't know, approximately like three months after I started streaming, I got permanently banned from Twitch for saying that America should nuke Israel in like a frothing at the mouth rage fest argument um, over uh, Israeli fascists and their treatment of Palestinians uh, in the West Bank. Um, like, it, it got me permanently banned from Twitch. That's why I set up on YouTube. That's why I'm still a YouTube streamer. Um, it took me years to get rid of that permanent ban. That's the start. Like, of all the people, you know? I need to see that clip. I don't even know if that clip exists. Yeah, that's why White Forest exists. Yeah, that's why this website exists, you know? I think it does. Yeah, based. I thought it was because you said Cracker. That was the second time I got banned. My point is, let the people of- Vosh, okay, but why are we talking so little of the civilians killed in the strike? Wait, hold on. I have to check your logs. Is that is this like a bit that you're are you like teeing me up? Should we not pay closer attention to the consequence of civilians being killed, civilians being killed, civilians being killed? I've got good news for you. According to the Houthis, our first uh, round of strikes did not kill a single civilian. There you go. I don't know if you're being sincere or not. I don't blame you for not knowing that like magically. But yeah, no, according to the Houthis, not a single civilian was killed in 73 strikes across Yemen. No, I straight up didn't know. Yeah. Uh, I think it's it's five Houthi uh, militants were killed. Soldiers. I mean, they're, they're, the, the Houthis have a military, you know? Um, and uh, four were wounded. Or is it six wounded? I don't know. But it was all uh, 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 members of their army. Yemen, deal with it. But you don't want to do that. You want America to deal with it. The idea that, like, you would... You have the gall, the audacity to be like, the women in Afghanistan... Like, that is the only way that we can genuinely implement stability. How stable is Afghanistan? Okay, now we're just talking about Afghanistan because we didn't engage with the point made by the chatter. First, the Jews on it. America uh -oh. is bom uh -oh. bombing Yemen because Yemen is stopping commerce from flowing through the Red Sea. And the commerce is stopping mm -hmm. in the Red Sea specifically because... Well, hold on. I don't like stopping commerce because it implies that they're just doing a blockade. They're firing at civilian vessels. There is a meaningful distinction there. A blockade is, you know, well, a blockade is still violent to an extent, but I think there's a meaningful distinction between, like, we have blocked off uh, uh, the strait versus we are firing missiles and sending drones at civilian uh, cargo ships, you know? 
Israel is conducting actions in Gaza that are akin to genocide. Uh, that's not why they're doing it. Remember when he said China was good for annexing Tibet because the Tibetans are primitive? Yeah, wait, hold on. Didn't he say that because the Tibetans had slaves in a caste system that China annexing them was good? The Houthis have slavery. Should we annex Yemen? 51st state? 51st state, boys? Is it time? Time for us to finally expand our borders? From sea to shining sea. Uh, <laughs> meaning the uh, red. Stop saying my hate group is better than the other. What is your solution? Chatter, who has been in here since 2008, who I, I'm glad hasn't gotten a lobotomy yet, I guess. What is your solution to the situation? Because you're surely celebrating blowing up the uh, Yemeni's population. The Houthis specifically, um, not the Yemeni's population. Though, to be fair, when Hassan did this stream, he would not yet have known that no civilians were killed. Though I doubt he'll change his rhetoric after finding that out. Um, but at the time this stream was done, we did not have any report on whether or not um, uh, uh, any civilians were killed. It seems like you like that, so you're championing that. Don't sit here and act like you have a better solution. You Wait, the solution is to bomb the Houthis. Wait, that, but that is the solution. The main question really is how effective it'll be, right? You know, uh, can we can we pepper the Houthis in such a way as to act like actually deter them from menacing ships in the Red Sea. I mean, we'll, we'll have to see. You can just sit there and say, oh, it's my hate group is better than the other. You're, you have I'm a hate group. This. Invade and destroy the Houthi Giga Chad. Yes, you're a pathetic, sniveling little coward who recognizes that his empire is crumbling. Why? Why? Why shit, dude? Why, why do people, why do lefties just say stupid shit like this? You sound like right-wingers who say the Roman Empire is collapsing again because they saw a black woman on TV. What do you, the are you talking about the houthis fire a salvo at missiles at the ocean at the red sea half a kilometer from the boat they were aiming at and the empire is crumbling come on why do they why do they insist on saying this i'm not joking olari da ass chud jack ass mother any time anything happens it's it, billions must die the, the empire is collapsing the west has fallen but like affirmatively this time you know why it's it's so stupid come on lefties love doing this shit dude and the only thing you can do is cope with the reality that America has done nothing for you, specifically with all of its imperial bounty, so you can think, oh yeah, we can roll over one of the poorest- Imperial bounty? The, the wealth of America is procured through neocolonialism. We don't, we don't do primitive accumulation anymore. That's like a very old, like, that's an earlier stage of capital. We're in late stage capitalism now. We don't do that. Imperial bounty? This is some, like, 18th century talking point shit, you know? Also, specifically with all of its imperial bounty, so you can think, oh, yeah, we can roll over one of the poorest countries on the fucking planet. Good? Congratulations! It's not rolling. We're just, it's targeted strikes against uh, airfields and stuff to prevent them from randomly attacking civilians. Yeah, but they love when he uses terms like that. Yeah, because it's an aesthetic argument. It's 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 vibes based. It's like, oh man, we're so lefty because we're using the term imperial bounty when talking about American. Well, okay, if by imperial bounty you literally mean like neo-colonial trade, I guess. But that feels like a misuse of the term. Like when I think of imperial bounty, like a bounty, I'm thinking like actual looting and plunder. I, I it's just it's just using terms, just terms, you know. Using terms, having fun, terms, love terms, using terms. Congratulations, dumbass. You did it. You're still a pathetic loser who's not going to be able to f pay rent. Your boss is going to f one girlfriend that you maybe will ever be able to get. And you have no... Why does this sound the same way that, like, red pill right-wingers try to like amp up their audience with like negging you know what i mean like oh you're not even lefty pilled bro you you can't make rent you know you don't even have a bugatti your boss is f your girlfriend i don't know I, maybe i mean i say a lot of wacky out of pocket shit as well i don't know i feel like the vibes are off there but maybe that's my own vibes argument you know you do this too i feel like the difference is usually when i do stuff like this i try to make it come across as not too self-serious and it feels like hassan isn't but maybe that's just me being uncharitable because when i do rants like that i i mean i am playing it up for a bit like i am trying to do this like you know semi-serious thing and maybe he is too. maybe he is too you know maybe he is too
no recourse whatsoever for the rest of your life. You're going to be a f pathetic little pleb who goes, that's awesome. We got it, baby. We're killing the Houthis out there. It's so stupid. That's so me, by the way. I love saying this. Stupid, brother. There's no way for you to ever f recover from this. This is how desperate white supremacist Nazis are. Bro, go on Twitter right now. The Nazis are defending the Houthis. Like all of them. The Houthis, the, the Nazis like the Houthis for the same reason that Andrew Tate pretended to be Muslim. Because radical Islamists tend to be very anti-Semitic and they like using them as a wedge against Israel. And they're benefiting substantially from the current, like, discourse being aligned against Israel. You are behaving in the exact same way that the jawless, chinless Iowa Nazis behave. Oh, I know I can't, I can't get a job, and I don't want to examine the material conditions. Everyone has told me that as a white man, I'm supposed to be so powerful. Seriously, what does any of this have to do with that? What, who, who, who out here is supporting the strike on the Houthis? Who, like, I have not seen anyone supporting the strike on the Houthis on the basis of, like, Haha, ha, they're dumb Muslims. Maybe Ben Shapiro? I guess like Ben Shapiro types, people with like neocon aligned perspectives. I, I, I don't really know. Maybe, but like the actual white supremacists and Nazis tend to be anti-Israel. And for that reason, they're supporting the Houthis. Like you can go look at clips of Nick Fuentes defending the Houthis on Twitter right now. And none of that happened. So what must be the real problem? Oh, that's right. I'm going to go dominate black people real quick. I'm in Yemen? I have no idea what we're talking about right now at this moment it, at, in the current in the in the current moment. I I I genuinely th this feels like is it's not projection. It's just I feel like all of the talking points are being rolled together like like it's it's Katamari Damacy and and he's just like collected all of the like vaguely adjacent talking points together into a kind of I, I have no idea. It's leftist slop content. It kind of is, yeah. I usually think of slop content as something that's not live streamed because live streams have their own sets of expectations with regards to like quality and behavior and what have you. But like, I don't know, man. It, it's like, yeah, leftist word salad slop. I don't know. All vibes. I'm going to go act like I am superior to them. I am descendant of the Nord Vikings. But you're not. You're a f loser. Just like that. F Nazi is a loser. You are the exact same kind of loser. Instead of looking for some esoteric, mythical Nordic rune that you want to identify with, you have identified with being an American pig. Be I, 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 I just, I don't, I don't know what blood is waffling about. I'm sorry. I don't even remember what the original thing he was responding to said. Being a capitalist warmonger. You don't even have like any kind of mythology associated with it. It is just indiscriminate bombing campaigns done for Exxon Mobil. Done for Yeah, dog. Exxon Mobil, Operation Prosperity. Yeah, dude, it's all all the talking points just rolling together. This is the Iraq War. This is the Vietnam War. Imperial bounty. We're starting a war with Iran. World War Three. You're a Nazi. You're a capitalist. You're a warmonger. You 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 hate black people. You're like yeah, it's fucking whatever, dude. Just toss it all at the wall. See what sticks. Um, <laughs> you know. Uh Dude, uh, you're 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 bourgeoisie. You're you're a kulak. You know. Oh my god. Wealthy, powerful individuals that will consistently fuck you. They will fuck you over and over again. You have no identity. This so rant would go hard if I was fourteen. Yeah, that's kind of yeah. I feel like that's kind of how it's marketed, right? You're grabbing on to what remains of America's industry, the military industrial complex, and all of its mm -hmm. output. Mm -hmm. That is so sad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're a, you're a, uh, you know, a, a, a die hard Raytheon fan if you uh, oppose piracy of any kind. I, it's just, I don't know. Fix your life, chatter. Jesus Christ, dude. It's wild. Absolutely wild to be riding this hard for. American corporations and American imperialists. Which, which corporations are we referring to? Which ones? Which, which, which corporations? 
uh, which ones? Realism. It doesn't even come back to help you, you idiot. We have no cohesive national identity even. We are literally a patchwork of different corporations. It's like a I'm sorry, would having a cohesive... Wait, well, first of all, that has nothing to do with what's being talked about. For two, why would we want a cohesive national identity? That's assimilationist rhetoric. The whole point of America is to be a melting pot. Like, there are tons of regional differences culturally between different states, regions within the state. What, what does that even mean? So, like, unironically, what is he talking about? Like, I feel like he's projecting some weird political beliefs he has onto this. It, it's like incoherent bullshit. What... Co I have, I genuinely, I have no idea, you know? It, it sounds like Nas bullshit, almost. Yeah, I don't know. Certainly, the arguments he's making here don't sound any meaningfully different from the kind that you would see from, um, from, like, Nick Fuentes on the subject, right? A bunch of corporate towns put together. The only glue that holds Americans together is this, like, weird American identity of dominating other countries that are way poorer than we are. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's the cultural thread that binds. That's definitely true. That's, that's, yeah, yeah. that's th th an accurate description of American politics and not like a 14-year-old a, a sophomoric, like, I just realized the Iraq war is a bad thing take. Uh, the only thing America has in common is that they like being evil. You know, okay. It's so sad. And every single time. How long does this go on? This isn't even about we, Yemen. We, you know, institute our might. We go overseas and we blow their bases up and you know we blow their weapons supplies and we're like yeah those guys are the bad guys you think we're doing something good but like when we steal their natural resources when yemen are we doing that right now uh, it's the iraq war everything is the iraq war everything is the iraq war all foreign policy is the iraq war uh the you the, the iraq war it's all it's all the iraq war the boats are their national resources. When we shoot down the missiles they fire at civilian cargo ships, we're actually stealing their scrap metal. We're taking their natural resources. At the end of the day, we, you don't even get a crumb of that. Like, what good is this entire imperial project? That's true. I, th I thought I personally would be massively enriched by efforts at stopping piracy in the Red Sea. But, you know, I guess, I guess yeah, you know, I, now that I'm looking at it, how it's developing, I'm not even going to get one pound of sand shipped to me in a mason jar, you know? The natural resources of Yemen, distributed wide across the United States. If you can't even get healthcare, I love the notion of uh, uh, being like, dog, I hate the Houthis because they have child brides, which is why I want to kill all the child brides. That, yep, that's, that's what Operation Prosperity Guardian is doing. We're using high-level American satellite intel to target every married 14-year-old girl in Yemen uh, with precision Tomahawk missile strikes. We're going to use that samurai missile drone thing, the one with the swords. We're going to use that. We're not even going after the, the, the pedophiles who married them. We're just going after the child brides, you know? So, like, we're using missiles so precise that we'll atomize the child brides while they're standing next to and holding hands with um, the pedophiles who, like, groomed and them, you know? Um, that's, that's our strat going into Yemen. Many people are saying this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this, was, this is like Operation Prosperity Guardian. With American bombs. Yeah, you know what fixes the child bride situation in Yemen? A tomahawk missile that taxpayers paid for instead of paying for your dumbass diabetes medication, you stupid f Here's the difference, by the way. No matter where that chatter is. I know that I often make jokes uh, at people, like with regards to like them being fat or problematic or whatever, but I feel like a lot of Hassan's rhetoric when it comes back to um, attacking America comes back to like a, um, like a, like a, 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 a like kind of chauvinistic, um, like coastal elite looking down on middle America attitude. Does anyone else get that vibe? Like, don't get me wrong. I say lots of problematic shit, but the standards by which I hold my stream and he, he holds him, like he holds his are, are different. I feel like the, you know, you can't even afford your diabetes medication isn't really like a joke that I would make. Partly because I think it strikes too close to home for a lot of people. Um, and also because it's kind of like the implication that like, I, I, I don't know, like you, you dumb fat redneck, you don't, Man, this could be me being uncharitable. There, there are just vibes that I get from him sometimes. I don't know. There is ideologically, I still want him to get healthcare. I still want him to get a better education. I still want him to find meaning in his life. That's the difference. I don't believe that like just because someone is a dumbass American Nazi 
that they deserve to get killed. The Nazis are pro Houthi. I, again, I like how can you even pretend to be a leftist while being this bad about understanding the discourse? How can you not see that basically every Nazi group has been supporting the Palestinians since October 7th because they've been using it as a way to JQ post? Like, this is not subtle. It's not like a minor shift. It's really f obvious that this is happening. How do you not know this? Okay. I don't think they should be murdered. I think they should have a meaningful life and no longer have those opinions. The goal is always to try and fix the material, the underlying material conditions, so that it is way harder to just like become a Nazi out of nowhere. One other statement that's worth pointing out here, Austin says, a coalition of countries committed to upholding the rules-based international order demonstrated our shared commitment to defending US and international vessels and commercial vessels exercising navigational rights and freedoms from illegal and unjustifiable attacks. The reason I point that out is because normally when you see the US highlighting their action in support of the international rules-based order, <laughs> it is for example- I love watching Consampi manufactured in real time, dude. Also there was a UN vote. What do you, it's a multinational coalition and there was a UN vote on condemning the Houthis for this behavior in the harshest of terms. That's not manufacturing consent. This objectively is an international rules-based, like the, the Houthis are absolutely violating like laws of the sea by attacking random civilian vessels. They were warned internationally. No, Vosh, the UN members all watched CNN and came to that conclusion. Oh, yeah, that's true. The Security Council had, like, CNN on, and they were like, whoa, wait, hold on a second. Oh, man, piracy is bad, actually. You know? And then th that's why they voted. Yeah. I bet you the average lefty online, like, leg doesn't know about the UN vote, or doesn't even know about, like, the uh, uh, the extent to which the, the world broadly has, like, taken to this, you know? Like, they, they genuinely think it's just America. Just because we've got the big boats. Also echoes awesome. language in, yeah, we're in using rule-based international order. Make no mistake, it's our rules. <laughs> rule-based international order means we make the rules. And the rule being don't attack civilian vessels in international waters. I think that's a pretty okay rule. I jet like I God, I wish I could talk to him for just a minute. Does he seriously think that only the United States believes that you shouldn't attack civilian vessels in international waters? Does he really like he's like, oh yeah, man, you Western chauvinist thinking you shouldn't attack civilian vessels that are traveling in international water. What do you, uh, you know, what, like what, what, what other like basic common sense international rules are actually just America, you know, American imperialism, you know, what, what else did I, am I attributing wrongly to international consensus? And we give the orders. So like, for example, you were like, Hey, genocide is bad, right? Let's say on Allah was like, Hey, the genocide of Palestinians is bad. We are going to implement a blockade in the Red Sea. They weren't implementing a blockade. They were just attacking random civilian vessels. You can take a look at the ones being attacked. We say, no, genocide is good. We are going to do that. And if you try to stop the genocide in your own little way, we're going to come and blow you up. I like the implication of this being the idea that America wouldn't have struck the Houthis and initiated Operation Prosperity Guardian if Israel wasn't currently doing a genocide. Like, the way lefties talk about this, the only reason we're doing this is because the Jews told us to. And if Israel was just minding its own business right now and it had nothing to do with Israel, we would actually be totally okay with the Houthis just firing missiles at random civilian ships in open waters, you know? Like, that is legitimately the implication of what Hassan is saying. That, like, oh, yeah, you know, we're only doing this for Israel. So, in any other circumstances, we would be okay with just random open piracy. That's definitely Definitely a real position, you know? Ignore the fact that the entire world teamed up against the Somali pirates. Jesus. It's Another not angle something of the that bombings? made a big issue out of in the, in the past. Yes, it was, but it's not been a big issue. Um, their, their ability to, to give unexpected reasons and rationale and do the unexpected. Remember, chatters, every single thing I said about Palestine was 100% correct. Many people yelled at me at the time. They're like, Hassan, I can't believe you're saying this is genocide. I can't believe you're saying this is genocidal. Oh, by the way, remember, America is so good that we uh, uh, fired off an explosion that big and killed no civilians. That's our intel, baby. We found out that that was the case. This is also unacceptable. I'm not saying it's genocidal, but I do think it's unacceptable. And it also is senselessly escalating. The correct way for those of you in the upcoming days that will ask, well, what would you have done? The correct way to deal with this is by stopping Israel's genocide 
in Gaza. Did you cover Ansar Allah's statement? Turkey condemned the attack on the Houthis. Yeah, Tur Turkey is essentially just acting like... Turkey has for a long while now been trying to ingratiate itself further to the Arab side of things because Erdogan is a dictator and the EU wants him to stop being a dictator. NATO wants him to stop being a dictator and the Arab world wants him to keep being a dictator as long as he leans more towards them. The Arab world doesn't give a f about him being a dictator. So um, Erdogan has been siding more and more and more with... Um, like anti-Western sides of things, which is sometimes good, uh, as is the case with them supporting the International Court of Justice case against Israel for genocide. Uh, but on the other side of things, it, you know, uh, it, it, it's, it's shit like this, right? Oversimplification? Yeah, it's complicated, but I feel like that's a decent summary of what's happening. America and Britain made a mistake in launching the war on Yemen because they did not benefit from their previous experiences. Had it not been for Bush's foolishness in pushing Ali Saleh to attack us in Saada in 2004, the Yemeni people would not have launched 2014 revolution that ended the rule of the American ambassador in Sana'a and expelled the Marines from it. Had it not been for the foolishness of America and Britain in pushing Saudi Arabia and the UAE to declare war on us in 2015, Yemen would not have been able to today carry out its religious, moral, and humanitarian duty in supporting Palestine. There is no doubt that America wow. and Britain today regret their... Hassan is literally just going to read that line uncritically and just roll with it. Yemen would not today be able to carry out its religious, moral, and humanitarian duty in supporting Palestine. You're just going to roll right past that, like, uncritically. Like, yep, yep, that's true. Yep, this is like a real perspective by people acting in actual good faith and th something they really believe, you know? Uh-huh, sounds legit. I, I will take uh, at their word the words of any uh islamist militia you know just get, throw th fire me uh, uh from a rocket directly uh into yemen uh, uh the paradise land just regurgitating propaganda yeah like again like there's no critical engagement at whatsoever you know like lefties will look at an objectively correct statement from a cnn broadcaster and call it manufacturing consent and then we'll look at blatant propaganda from the other side and go like ah yes of course and soon they will realize the direct aggression against Yemen was their greatest folly of their history. The thing is, like, they do talk- Seriously? Direct aggression against Yemen will be the greatest folly in the history of the United States and Britain? We're just gonna read that and just like, oh yeah, you know, like, f dude, like, you might as well have a paragraph in the end here, Hassan reading like, an Allah will curse all of your firstborn sons or what, and Hassan's like, yep, yeah, mm-hmm, yep, yeah, mm -hmm. like, what, D dude, seriously? The greatest mistake. A big game, but honestly, they, they follow through on it. I mean, they're crazy. Oh my God. I don't think there's a- Dude, he's like, dude, this- idiot bro literally yeah man those houthis talk a big game but like yeah it will fall through yep i guess it will be the greatest mistake i mean it seems incredible to me but when the houthis say they'll you know enact the jihad against america it'll be the greatest mistake in our history oh, i guess I, I don't know i guess we have to believe them dude holy shit oh my god <laughs> what the f why is everybody like this there's like a million people watching a stream throughout this going like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yep. Literally, right here, I I'm blocking it with my thing. Cough inspired, yep, they don't f around. Like, yep, uh-huh, the Houthis, yep, that's the, the Houthis. We're unironically, like, pro-Houthi now. We are literally indistinguishable from those people of promote, like, posting f AI images of the Houthis, like, stomping on Israel or whatever, you know, like a, like a big Houthi militant, you know. Um, Jesus Christ. Remarkable. By the way, the guy whose account that he's looking at right now is literally a member of the Houthi government. The Supreme Political Council. L li like, he's literally just reading verbatim, like, a jihadist insurgent uh, uh, government member's Twitter account and going, like, just straight off the presses. Uh, like, yeah, mm-hmm, yep. The, the, truly, Yemen will uh, make uh, the American infidels pay for their uh, arrogance, you know? Our war is moral. And it is not with the American people or the British people, but rather with the Zionist gang that rules Washington and London. Hey, hey, Hassan, have you heard what the Houthis flag says on it? Are you aware of what the Houthis flag says on it? First tweet or second tweet, just slightly, you know, just a little bit. Do you, th do you think Hassan would be like, uh, no, man, they say Zionists, not Jews. They don't mean Jews. Like, dude. <laughs> Keep reading. He literally says it's the JQ that cites every war. Bringing down this gang. 
by gang he means Zionists, is the responsibility of all people, including the American people and the British people. This gang is the one that exploited the need of this American citizen and pushed him to live on someone else's land and house. Do you now know the source of evil in this world? Hassan, remember when I said the Nazis are pro-Houthis? There's a reason for that. There are ideological parallels between Nazis and the group that has cursed be the Jews on their flag. Like, again, like, dude, horseshoe theory is unironically true. I'm very sorry to say to all of you guys, I'm not a part of it, but it is true. I'm kind of not joking. I like, uh, unfortunately, you know, liberals uh, have a point on this one. When it comes to anti-Semitism, the left is not beating the allegations. Literally, what the f dude? I, 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 I don't know. I. I feel like I should have something more to say here, but watching Hassan uncritically read, like, Yemeni propaganda from a government member of the Houthis, then looking at his Twitter and immediately seeing JQ posting is so on point that I feel like I don't even need to add to it with any analysis. It just immediately, like, oh my god. Yeah, it kind of speaks for itself. Yeah, it kind of does. How do you, um... I always forget how to do this. How do you search on a person's Twitter feed? Like, like, how, how do you search, um, what this guy has posted? Not on PC? Ugh. From user? Oh, but that's annoying. Okay, I've Googled this guy's Twitter at, plus Zionist, plus Twitter. So... We now have three tweets that include the word Zionist in them, and I just want to—I just want to get a character check, okay? Oh, here's another one where he uses the word Zionist. This was posted a couple days ago. He used the exact same clip of this Israeli settler um, being horrible to Palestinians. I've seen this clip. So this guy keeps posting the same clips of like one Jewish guy being evil. I wonder why. I wonder what. Um, what his interests are. The primary responsible for the violations taking place in Palestine are the Zionist officials in Western capitals, such as Washington and London, not the Jewish settlers who were tempted to acquire the land and homes of the Palestinians who were expelled from them. Jacob is one of the settlers from New York who justified his ownership of the usurped home of the original owner by saying, if I do not steal it, someone else is going to steal it. Wait, this guy is defending Jewish settlers in the West Bank. Wait, the primary responsible for the violations taking place in Palestine are not the Zionist officials in Western capitals of Washington and London, not the Jewish settlers who were tempted to acquire the land and homes of the... That's a weird take. I don't even know what to make of that, to be honest. My advice to the U.S. government. People in the world have become more aware of the danger of your immoral foreign policies, and therefore it is no longer in your interest to move to please the Zionist lobby and arms companies at the expense of the security and stability of the world. Zionist entity planted in Palestine. Huh. I think the most sussy tweet was the one we found immediately. This guy sure does like to repeat shit, though. Well. The distraction from the ICJ chatters. They've been gearing up for this for a while. This is Yahya Sari, uh, spokesman of the Yemen's, uh, Yemen's armed forces. Here. If we look at the crimes being committed in Gaza, this is... Take a look at this guy's Twitter account. Yahya Sari. Oh, he's got a master's degree in uh, political science. That's nice. We love to see it. Uh, Yemen's armed forces. Air. If we look at the crimes being committed in Gaza, this is uh, from December 19th. They're similar to the ones that were committed against us in the past nine years. Uh, this is the current spokesperson. Bombarding hospitals, they bombarded our hospitals. Bombarding markets, they bombarded our markets. Bombarding schools, they bombarded our schools. Bombarding roads, people while they're soundly sleeping in their homes. Just like it happened to us. It's the same aggressor, the same American bombs being poured on Gaza, or the same ones being poured on us in Yemen. The aggressor is one. The aggressor is one. The leader of it is one. America. The one who led the aggression to Yemen is the same one who's leading it in Palestine. The majority were saying, strike Israel, we dare you. We strike them. They said, seize a ship, we dare you. We seized one and took it to our port in Hodeida. It greatly honors us that we mobilize against the enemy. Is he unironically uh, uh, just broadcasting Houthi propaganda now? Yeah, it seems so. Like, legitimately, it does, like, genuinely seem to be just, like, everyone in his chat going, like, yep, mm -hmm. literally, like, someone here saying he's not wrong. Facts. Facts. Um, you know, like, yeah. 
keep I, I, like not even to get into how much the Houthis have like barbarized um, the the Yemeni people, like as if they actually act in the interest of Yemeni people. Um, but like, yeah, they literally admitted their goal isn't to target Israeli ships. Yeah, they well because they love. Yeah, the goal is not to sink or seize ships linked to Israel, but rather to force them to use the road of good hope as an economic pressure card in Israel to stop the crime of genocide in Gaza and lift its siege on residents. So it's not. Th so on one hand, they will say like, yeah, we're not interested in sinking or seizing Israeli ships. We're just trying to pressure people into um, into uh, 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 taking a longer route to apply economic pressure. But then here's the guy Hassan is watching right now. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, saying they carried out naval operations in mid-December um, uh, against two ships linked to the Zionist entity. This means, by the way, that a tiny portion of the shareholder ownership of the company that this ship is chartered underneath is like an Israeli guy. Like, not that they're stopping in Israel or whatever else, just that, you know, very tenuous association. And then down here they say... The Yemeni armed forces reassure all ships heading to all ports across the world, except for Israeli ports, would be safe and must keep the identifying devices open. So wait, hold on a second. Here's the spokesperson for Yemen saying all ships heading to all ports across the sea are fine unless you're heading to or from an Israeli port. But then this random guy is saying, actually, no, we're trying to send all people around the road of good hope. Guys, what do we take from this? They're rabble rousers. They don't actually care about Palestinians. They're anti-Semites and they're galvanizing people against the West. They had plenty of reasons to do that before and now they're doing it by engaging in indiscriminate piracy. They're just doing shit. There's no consistency. There's no strategy. They'll say the literal leader, the spokesperson of the Houthis says you are safe heading through here unless you are uh, uh, headed for Israeli ports. But they lie, because pr prior to that, including the two ships right here, they weren't headed to Israeli ports. Hassan is defending these people. That we are confronting the Zionist enemy who is aggressing on Palestine and our homeland. We will continue to confront the American-Israeli enemy until the aggression in Gaza stops. This is a very important part. We will confront the American uh, Israeli enemy until the aggression on Gaza stops. <coughs> As for the battle in our homeland, we are, God willing, fully prepared and ready for anything from the enemy. If Saudi and Emiratis think, even think of leading an aggression on us, commanded by Israel and USA, we are present and ready. They've tried us for nine years. If they want to do it again, we're here and we're ready. As for America and Israel, if they attack our homeland, they will commit foolishness they've never committed before. The response will be fierce from the people and the armed forces. Yeah, God forbid people attack Yemen. Everyone knows that Yemen, the nation long gone unattacked, uh, will, will uh, you know, enact a jihad of unimaginable proportions. If you ever attack Yemen, you know, attack Yemen, you don't say. Wow, that's unprecedented. We are with our brothers in Palestine and Lebanon in facing Israel because they're our greatest enemy. We didn't say death to America. With Literally our all the people in Hassan's chat are just like agreeing with this Houthi commander. Again, slavers, child rapists, butcherers of uh, the, the Yemeni people, uh, openly lying, uh, anti-Semites, uh, supported by Western Nazis, just no kid, just uncritical support. What? It's not America. It's not America, right? It's not. Hey, this feels very aesthetically leftist. Look, it's a guy in a red beret. It's a guy in a red beret. You know, um, he he must be a good guy. You know. Let's turn. We are serious about it. A lot of Yemenis believe Houthis are not the best and are corrupt in their own sense, but still, most can agree that they are not the greater enemy America and Saudi is. Thank you. That's simply my point. My point is always that many people you can always find someone who will dick ride america you're gonna find you're gonna find like kurdish people for example or even turkish people as well that will be like no america really good actually what are you talking hmm we really want to go down this specific route with the kurds uh hassan pecker i wonder why the kurds who have been butchered and oppressed in all of the countries that they live in um, might have some pro-American attitudes when America has at points shown solidarity um, and military support to them. Not legitimately or authentically, to be fair. We've been very bad allies to the Kurds. But like, hmm, I wonder, I wonder when like Kurds are being mistreated in Syria, Iraq, Turkey, and Iran. I wonder if there's some kind of common thread here. 
you shouldn't be surprised about this type of rhetoric. He said some insanely racist shit about Kurds so many times. Yeah, because to him, Kurds are like the Uyghur Muslims or the Tibetans. The Kurds are like an uh, inconvenient oppressed group. Uh, where the oppression they experience is usually done at the behest of anti-American governments. So he has to pretend that the Kurds are some are like hog people. Um, oh yeah, the Uyghur Muslims, the Tibetans, they're hog people. They might be oppressed and they might have been colonized or brutalized or murdered, but they're hog people. They're spiritually aligned with the United States because they don't support, you know, the glorious People's Republic of Iran or whatever. Talking about so much better, so much better than the current situation. You go to Iran, there are you know Shaw writers which is uh, pretty crazy most of the most of the Iranians in diaspora are like that a lot of the Iranians in diaspora are like that sorry but then you have the Shaw writers in Iran still they write them super hard and they say the most embarrassing stuff you I think I think that most of the people um who have left Iran actually just don't like Iran I really don't think the majority of the Iranian expats who dislike Iran are Shaw writers I think they just don't like the f Ayatollah you know, like I, I, I feel again, like we're doing it again, right? This is an effort. It's like, oh yeah, the people who don't like the glorious, you know, humanitarian people's Republic of Iran. Well, it's because all of them simply long for the days of the Shah. You know, that's the only possible reason that they could feel that way. You know, um, never mind the fact that the Shah was literally like half a century ago, and that a significant portion of the people who have left Iran uh, or who are within Iran and don't like the Iranian government. Uh, would have to dislike them based on the behavior of the government itself and the Ayatollah, but you know, ah, whatever. You've ever heard in your entire life is the classic, like, I am Iranian, you need to glass Iran, my friend, we want the monarchy back. Like, that's the, that's the type of energy that you get. But over I grew up around Iranian Persian expats in Beverly Hills, Jews, who um, uh, fled Iran when it became a, a hyper-radicalized uh, Islamic uh, theocracy. And they don't usually say stuff like, man, I miss the Shah. They usually say stuff like, you know, it sure was cool when Iran wasn't, like, controlled by <laughs> Iranian theocrats. Maybe we could do something like that. I've never heard defense of the Shah from any of those people. It's more like, damn, it sure does suck how things turned out there. An opinion held by many people still in Iran. For all... Most people understand, even if they absolutely despise their own current government, as I do for Turkey, they recognize that the American government's involvement is going to be far worse for the country's future. Really? This, again, like, this is incredibly reductive. It genuinely depends. Like, it massively depends. Um, there are plenty of examples where American involvement um, with a country has actually helped to enrich it, like, depending on the order of the country or, like, its associations. Um, the Middle East, not so much historically, but there are examples where that has been the case, for sure. That's it. America's gravest mistake, which is not even a mistake, it's a deliberate attempt, but America's worst problem is that it has never allowed these countries to develop their own political movements without interference. That is an issue. So because of that issue... Lacan, can you fucking tone it down? What the f a lot of these nations have become infinitely more reactionary as a consequence of that Western involvement because everybody goes, no, don't touch that shit. What are you talking about? Now we can't even fight our own battles. I know this, once again, from Turkey. America's coup in Turkey literally gave Erdogan a lifeline and another 10, 15 years of mandate. It did. Erdogan changed, directly changed the constitution by referendum, meaning a majority vote gave Erdogan the power to change the Turkish- Wait, was this a U.S. coup? My understanding was that uh, the Turkey just likes having the military coup its government. They do it for fun. Was this, was this a U.S. coup? Turkish minister says U.S. is behind 2016 failed coup. Okay, so a minister said it. Does that mean it's true? The U.S. State Department said the accusation is wholly false. Is there any, is, is there any person who said it who isn't just this person? That's literally an Erdogan talking point. Yeah, real quickly, why why does Hassan dislike Erdogan? What what difference is there? They're like the worst, most belligerent member of NATO. They align more with like Arab states than they do with the West. Like why why does he dislike Erdogan? Soylu is referred to some protesters as LGBT deviants, and Erdogan said on Wednesday there was no such thing as LGBT. Excellent. Okay. So is so Hassan is anti-Erdogan, but he's just decided to roll with the idea that Turkey's failed coup was American because one 
like far right dude in government said it because it's like an Erdogan talking point. Is is there any more like evidence to this? Maybe maybe there is. I I I I'd have to look into it. Constitution from a parliamentary system to a presidential one. In the aftermath of that coup, there was martial law instituted. This happens all the time. And Americans don't want to listen to someone who's actually from a country like this or don't want to listen to someone who even looks like them, sounds like them, loves Didn't Hassan just do a big rant shit-talking expats from countries like China or Iran? Wait, he literally just shit on diaspora. He literally just did that. Who, how, how does anyone watch this? What the f what, like, how can you possibly make these arguments back to back like this? They're diametrically opposed. They're opposites. Loves America, lived in America for, you know, 10 years plus. They don't want to listen to anybody. They just want to listen to whoever is going to tell them everything America is doing is actually good and righteous. Ultimately, they're trying their very best. I don't think I can get this across. At a fundamental level, I do not believe that America is interested in the Middle East with honest and good intention. I mean, if the honest and good intent... The, the funny thing is, is that what America is doing right now in the Middle East is probably actually the most upfront and honest thing we've ever done, which is, we want to protect international maritime trade, so we're going to shoot you, which is what we're doing. That's true. I believe them. I think that's honest. Yeah. That's it. I don't believe that. And I think there's enough historical... There's enough historical precedent that backs this sentiment. I don't think Iraq it's good. War. America's involvement in the Middle East has always been bad. Everything is like the Iraq War. Uh-huh. Everything. Iraq War. Did you know that in the Iraq War, George Bush lied? Everything. Iraq War. Boots on the ground. Forever War. World War Three. Iraq War. Um, government lies. Iraq War. Everything is Iraq War. All wars are the Iraq War. Almost every other country that's outside of the Middle East and its involvement in the Middle East has always been bad. Russia included. Or if you want to consider Afghanistan, it'd be a... Another part of it, I guess. I loop Afghanistan into the conflict in the MENA region as well, even though, you know, it's Asia. One of the pro one of the things is, like, there's not a lot of actors in town. There's regional actors that you can go to. If you're not going to be with America, then uh, you're, you're going to work with someone who's against America. And the regional actors that are positioned against America, more often than not, are going to be, like, Iran or Russia or China. Does that make sense? You say America should not be happy... Wait, no, it doesn't. And what, what Russian regional actors are we referring to exactly? Out of curiosity, what, what regional interests are we talking about, like, locally from Russia? Do you mean Ukraine? Because he just denounced Russia's involvement in the area. And if we're talking about foreign investment in the Middle East, America takes top gun with our support of Israel. So is... I, I don't even know what that means. I'm sorry. I, I don't even understand. I don't know, man. I feel like this isn't going to top him uncritically reading Houthi propaganda from a person whose Twitter account just three hours ago put out an like unambiguous JQ argument. With their government wasting their tax money bombing the Middle East, why do you dismiss the Yemeni chatter that doesn't want their Houthi government wasting their money bombing ships on the strait? Beautiful question. Thank you very much. The Houthi government that you are talking about is utilizing resources that is getting from Iran for the most part, okay, on uh, Red Sea commercial traffic that is happening in its backyard. America is using our tax dollars to go f those guys up 8,000 miles away. Wh what? What? Military spending is okay if it's, if it's close? What? The, yeah, the point of navies is that they can go far and trade is global. What does that even mean? It's international trade moves through the Red Sea. It's international waters. The, they're just as international for the Houthis as America. They're international waters. That's the point. Do you think navies just hug the coast of the country they're from? Vosh or leftist real? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Man, every time I don't watch Hassan for a month or two, I think, man, I should probably stop having so many, like, mental negative associations. He's probably not as bad as I think. And then I see anything he has to say on foreign policy, and immediately it's like, wait, hold on, wait. 
this guy is literally like a blight on the, the Western left. They all are. The, the main issue is that like, it's not just Hassan, dude. It's like literally every leftist online. I'm not even joking. I feel like I might actually be, in terms of large content creators, the lone ship in the sea, so to speak here. I genuinely don't know. Like everyone else, including like squad members, is, um, you know, is, is I, I, have, I have no idea. Wild. Now I'm the Juan guy. Yeah. Jesus. Please don't go f insane like these people. I think the reason why I haven't gone insane like these people is because I have enough of a personality and like good enough takes and perspectives that I can sort of like project my identity and my analysis without relying on the same tired lefty tropes of like, you know, America bad or whatever. People say that I'm a good onboarding or intro to leftism sometimes, but I don't think I am because that would imply that there's anything but me after this. But I genuinely think that if you look at most other so-called orthodox leftist content creators, their takes are more juvenile and insipid than mine ever are, even when I'm feeling particularly spicy that day. Like you go to other content creators on the left and like a lot of them like, dude, li listen to what we listen to. He's the biggest lefty streamer, dude. What the f it literally is like America bad, America bad, America bad, America bad. Like there's nothing, there's nothing beyond that. You know, any, any argument from chat, he yells for five minutes, America bad. Like that's it. You know, it's, it's juvenile. I, it's like an unwillingness to critically engage with the complexities of the world, which is by the way, again, what made Karl Marx special. You think Karl Marx was the first guy to come up with the idea that workers are mistreated? That idea goes back thousands of years. That's not new. There were slaves in Egypt who were like, yeah, man, I think like we're getting treated. We're getting like the rough, rough end of the, the stick here. You know, like that's not new. It's like intelligent, engaged, critical analysis that distinguishes like the leftist tradition from just, I don't know, uh, campism or, 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 or just like partisan bullshit, you know, whatever they end up falling into. Yeah. I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. We'll see how this pans out, I guess. In international law, the high seas are considered a global common. No, 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 dude. The international waters that are close to your country, you're, you, it's okay for you to waste dollars attacking civilians there. Um, but international waters elsewhere on the planet, uh, that's not your shit, bro. Even though it's international waters. It's actually national to Yemen, even though it says it's international. It's actually, it's actually national, international. H Bomber Guy and Big Joel don't have any atrocious takes as far as I remember. In fairness, they don't do like day by day commentary on this kind of stuff. You know, they don't like tweet out their take on every like relevant issue. H Bomber Guy's Dark Souls takes are trash. I've watched that video and no, I think they're pretty good. Man, I don't f know. It's it's just it's just kind of disappointing. It's very doomer. I, again, I don't get any like enjoyment from the, you know, uh from being contrarian on this. Uh, it's, it's just so, so much of the shit that I see from other people. It's just objectively wrong. They're not even, they don't even know enough to like mount an argument to prove me wrong. Uh, I don't know. I think this is largely because sentiment around Palestine is really strong. Yeah. And a lot of people are like weaponizing that in an effort to attack Jews. Seriously, go on Twitter and look at the top trending posts involving Yemen because there are a lot of people there who are unambiguously Nazis, and they're getting support from lefties too. A lot of horseshoe shit is happening right now. Uh, which, by the way, is proving Israel right, you know? All you're doing, like, when, 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 when the left is so incapable of engaging with these subjects that they end up agreeing with Nazis on stuff related to Israel, even if the Nazis are being disingenuous, the, the like, Zionist argument of them, them needing to have their own, like, fortress country, um, like, becomes correct, because they've proven they can't have allies elsewhere. Um, like, it, it's so f I am Turkish. Hassan talked shit about murdered 14-year-old Kurdish child by Turkish fascist cop while he was talking Turkish chatters. I'd have to see it to, to like, believe it. But I, I would believe it, I guess. I don't know. Hassan will say, I have never in my life, not once, heard Hassan say any talking point that, uh, with regards to foreign policy, that sounded opposite to America bad. Like, I have, I've never heard him able to articulate any argument that doesn't have that, like, like that necessary aesthetic component. I'm sure he has, just, you know, as a matter of probability, he had to have done it at least some point. But, like, man, holy shit. I think he gave Joe Biden props when he helped Lula in Brazil, if I recall correctly. Sure, sure, but even then, it would, it, that's because of Lula, right? Like, that's not... That, that still is like, a, oh, okay, like Biden lucked into having a good take this time. It's not really like a, it, it's not, it, it's not a deviation from the aesthetic, you know, because it's always the aesthetic, everything, aesthetic, aesthetic, aesthetic. Oh my God. Well, all right, we should probably cap this segment off. I feel like I've sort of um, vented my complaints, though it's not going to change anything like the, it's going to keep being as bad out there in terms of like people's takes.
Somebody linked earlier, hold on, Kyle Kalinske comes, across, comes out unequivocally for the Houthi pirates. Let me see. Sometimes they have to take it. Uh, breaking, U.S. starts a legal war with Yemen. This is why my sub count doesn't explode, by the way, because I, I just, I can't do the kind of like sensational gonzo, uh, you, you know, this would be like a video that gets me a lot of views. Illegal war, Joe Biden, impeach, blah, blah. And nobody's going to do anything to try to stop it. Well, let's do the bare minimum that we can and try to block trade with you. So what happened as a result of that? Okay, the insurance rates for the ships in Israel went up. Sometimes they have to take a different, much longer route to get to Israel. Oh, man, the horror. Like, like one of the things that kind of upsets me is that the idea of people not understanding the importance of free international maritime trade is some, like very, very frustrating. Like, it's this isn't even like a left or right thing, you know? This isn't even like a, this isn't like a leftist or fascist or liberal or any other issue. It's this, it's just an objective fact of the world. Understanding the importance of international maritime trade is as important as understanding like how the water and rain cycle works. It, it, it's like so... It's so fundamental, you know, everyone could, like, everyone needs to know it, you know? So when people are like, oh, wow, you know, your Funko Pops arrived late, it, it's very frustrating. I don't know. How terrible. But the U.S. would rather protect trade to Israel than... Pro Not trade to Israel. Those ships weren't going to Israel. They were just random ships. Protect Palestinian babies who are being bombed on the regular. It is true that America doesn't give a about Palestinian babies. I'm not here to defend America's behavior with regards to Israel. If you wanted the Houthis to stop, you know what you could have done? Told Israel, hey, you've already been doing this for months. You can go ahead and wrap it up now. 28,000 dead civilians is enough. Bombing, uh, you know, another hospital, another school, another UN building, another marketplace. Wrap it up. I think we got the point. I, I agree that we should put a stop to what Israel is doing, but we also should put a stop to what the Houthis are doing. Uh, we can stop both, or, well, I suppose we can only stop one because America refuses to do anything about Israel, but we are doing something about the Houthis, so that's good at least. I think the 12,000 dead babies is enough. If you wanted them to stop, Biden could have told them, no more money, no more weapons, we're going to stop this. This is having wide-ranging, this is having wide-ranging consequences. Instead, what does he do? Pats Israel on the back, gives them a green light tells them they're special and they're precious, and then decides to drag the U.S. into another Mideast war. We're not dragging the U.S. into another Middle East war. Uh, firing missiles into Yemen is not dragging us into another war. Everything gets compared to Iraq. On their behalf. We're not doing this on Israel's behalf. That's a borderline anti-Semitic talking point. Like, that's just fully like a the Jews have, like, deceived the U.S. into, like, that's just not, they're, they're threatening international maritime trade. Also, Operation Market, Gar or Operation Prosperity Guardian isn't just an American effort. It's literally an internationally-led effort. There's a U.N. condemnation that happened right before we began firing. Like, it's not just America, you know? I mean, you know, I'm at a loss for words here because I, I, ex I always expect... The US. I keep almost saying Market Garden because that's the operation that I like have in my head more. Like it's the it's the cooler name, you know. To make stupid decisions, to do terrible things, but this is like a level above and beyond. This was one hundred million trillion percent avoidable. We don't need to be going to war with Yemen. We don't need to be bombing ten cities in Yemen. We don't need a hot war with the Houthis. And by the way, another really we're not. It's not a hot war. It's it's totally one sided. We're not doing counterinsurgency here. We're just firing missiles at targets. I, I would agree with this if they if we were like dropping a bunch of boots on the ground. But we're we're America. You know, we 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 can just kind of park an aircraft carrier. It's the Eisenhower, right? That's that's who we've got out there. Yeah, it's the Eisenhower. Here we go. Okay. We're America. We don't need to put boots on the ground. We've got this plus about a half dozen other major ships. All we need to do is is you is park these in the Red Sea and and fire missiles and do airstrikes. Uh, we can also use like Saudi airspace to attack from different directions. There's a lot of there's a lot of wacky stuff we can do. We're we're the U.S. of A. It's not like a hot war. It's not boots on the ground. You know we're not we're not we're not doing uh you know counterinsurgency effort we're not taking over cities or trying to hold territory or whatever i don't support any of that bullshit it is a big boat though important point this makes americans less safe because now that's objectively not true 
Well, it is possible that this, like, escalates into a broader thing that makes Americans less safe, but we're literally doing this to protect international maritime trade, and some of that trade is American ships, so... You are begging for retribution and retaliation because the U.S. is doing Israel's dirty work for them. Okay, that this is okay. Okay, this is that's this is literally just like the anti-Semitic talking point. I, like this is the argument being made by Nazis on Twitter. Where it's not everyone. Again, you can literally look at the UN condemnation or the people involved. Real, like everyone in the world wants a safe Red Sea to travel through. Like, come on, man, come on. Um, I'm really sorry. I know that Kyle Kalinske himself is not anti-Semitic, or at least I'd be very surprised if he was. But, like, the idea that, th that this international effort, one which is not even being opposed by China or by Russia, is America doing the dirty work of Israel, is, like, it is just the Nazi talking point. It is the one you will see Nick Fuentes making. It, like, it's, it, that's really bad. Like, you know, it, it, you shouldn't... Y yeah. This makes us less safe. It absolutely makes us less safe. We are not a target of Houthis or Hezbollah or Hamas. But you know what? When you keep sending money and you keep sending weapons and you keep greenlighting a genocide, maybe eventually they go, hey, they are the problem. You know, they're they, the they were targeting us and they do attack our bases. But also, again, they chose to attack the Red Sea. I mean, I, I do agree that we're exacerbating tensions uh, by our support of Israel, but you can't attack international maritime trade. You just can't do it. Dealer that's giving Israel the addict their fix. And now you go and you bomb Yemen. I, I'll, I said it before, I'll say it again. The Houthis are correct. Their action of blocking the ships was correct. It's just like, man, I wish I could make points like this. I feel like my job would be a lot easier, you know? Absolutely. It should have been the UN that was doing that, right? It should have been the US if we actually cared about human rights, us doing that. No, Yemen, a super poor country, had to do the right thing and step up, and now we're bombing them as a result of it. They're not blockading Israel. They're just randomly attacking ships in the Red Sea. You can't do that, please. Now, I should point out, there, there are some reports that are unconfirmed as of this moment that um, they went after U.S. ships. So, uh, Crystal was telling me that just the other... No, that, wait, that's not unconfirmed. They definitely did that. Is that, un wait, is that unconfirmed? I thought that was just being reported on, like, factually, like, matter-of-factly. Of course they would. They, they absolutely did that, like, multiple times. The U.S. and U.K. ships in the area. ...today... We targeted a bunch of their drones. We, like, shot down a bunch of Yemen's drones, the drones that they're using, to police the Red Sea, effectively. No, not to police, to attack civilian ships. Uh, dude, Kyle, the drones we shot down were en route to attack civilian ships. Those, those, those were drones. The Houthis don't police the Red Sea. They don't have patrols. They sent those drones out to attack. They're dr like what the police? They're they, they, they we it's they're attacking ships in international water. They can't police the. Um, and there are some reports now that they went after U.S. ships. We don't know the timeline of the events. So in other words, we don't know if the Houthis knew the U.S. were going to attack them, or the U.S. was already in the midst of attacking them, and then the Houthis started attacking the ships. Or we don't know if the they Houthis attacked our ships before we shot them. However. Uh, we were almost, uh, we were definitely like always going to attack Yemen. So if you want to argue that they were engaging in some kind of like preparatory defense, uh, I guess you could, but you know, they attacked civilian ships to begin with, so. They attacked the ships in retaliation to us attacking their drones the other day. We don't even know for sure if they did attack the ships. They're just some unconfirmed reports. They're that... not unconfirmed and the drones that we shot down were on their way to attack civilian... We do know the timeline. This is the literal timeline. Yeah, we do know the timeline. This isn't like a kept secret or whatever. Boarded the galaxy leader and sailed her to Hodaida. Uh, struck and damaged uh, by an Iranian Shahed-136. Is that a drone or a missile? Uh, munition autonomous pusher prop drone? I think that's a one-way drone. So it's like a drone missile, kind of. Attacked unsuccessfully with an anti-ship ballistic missile, then successfully with another. Minor damage. Minor damage, no casualties. Minor damage, no casualties. Onboard fires, another damage. Later, a UAV assessed to be heading for the Strindo was shot down by the French fr uh, Navy frigate 
Langdok. Initial hijacking attempted by skiffs deterred by an exchange of fire from onboard security. This was followed by the launch of two or three anti-ship missiles with mist. Man, the Houthis suck. The assisting USS Mason was also targeted by a UAV, which it intercepted. Okay, so there's the first attack against a U.S. vessel. Um, her owner is Ardmore Shipping, Bermuda. Israeli ship owner Aiden Ophir's EBS Ventures had divested its 1.9 million share stake months previously. What? Why is, Wik I guess Wikipedia is like providing the excuse the Houthis would use, but like at some point in the past, a partial stockholder of the country, of the company that owned the ship was Israeli, I guess, had been ordered to Yemen by the uh, putative Yemeni Navy, Missile Mist, beneficial owner, Greater China Intermodal Investments, Eastern Mediterranean Loop, no schedule cost, Israel not called there uh, recently, fire damage, uh, fire and other damage turned around and exited. Uh, wave attack, wave attack, no damage. What is that? Double strike, fire damage. Uh, see, uh, Mediterranean shipping company attack failure. Struck by one way attack, UAV, no injuries reported. Several explosions near the vessel, no, no injuries. Uh, one successful missile strike, minor damage. The next day, an attempted hijack. First direct engagement with Osp Operation Prosperity Guardian results in 10 Houthis killed. First casualties in the theater. First blood. At least 21 UAVs and missiles were launched, 18 of which were intercepted at, look at that, the USS Eisenhower Carrier Group. On the 11th of January, that's uh, yesterday, oil tanker boarded and commandeered by commando 50 nautical miles east of Sahara, Oman, last track headed towards da da da. So hijacking, even just yesterday. Clueless, today I will attack a carrier group. True. That happened, but now, now that's almost certainly going to happen. And this is what we've been talking about, guys, how everything escalates out of control and the tit for tat, it turns into a massive snowball effect, right? And so now, you know, the Houthis fire back on some U.S. ship. Nobody's died. No U.S. people have died, right? But imagine even one U.S. soldier dies. Then, you know, Joe Biden and neocons and Republicans, all these people could look at that and say, well, the Houthis are just a proxy for Iran. So this means Iran killed a U.S. soldier. Now we got to go to war with Iran. What, man? It really feels like online lefties can't engage with any Middle Eastern foreign policy that isn't like everyone but me wants to go to war with Iran. We're not, ta nobody's talking about this. We're just talking about uh, uh, bombing the Houthis to stop them from attacking civilian vessels in the Red Sea. Like where, where have we gone from this? Where, where are we at right now? So this is where we're at. Look, of all the horrible things that Joe Biden has done, Literally put at the top of the list, the tippy top of the list, green lighting Israel doing a genocide and arming them and funding him, them as they do it. I would and agree. now illegally and offensively bombing Yemen, bombing the Houthis in Yemen. This is a country that neither illegal nor offensively. This is absolutely being done defensively as a response to multiple attacks against both U.S. Navy vessels and civilian vessels in the Red Sea didn't attack us and was only trying to effectively do a blockade of Israel in a sad attempt to put economic pressure on them to get them to stop carpet bombing babies in Gaza. They were not blockading Israel, and if you sincerely believe the Houthis are authentically acting out of humanitarian interest while ignoring the incredible lack of care they have for humanitarian like norms and rights in their own territory, like, again, it, like you're, you're a mark, right? You're falling for it, you know? Um... This, this would be like listening to Iran uh, talk about, like, the, the plight of Muslims in the Middle East uh, against America and think they're being sincere or whatever, as opposed to just using it as a way of galvanizing people against America and legitimizing their own power. I, I don't know what else to say about it, man, but this is, this is bad. And so we told you from the very beginning in those long Israel segments, we told you, look out, because this is how giant regional war start this is how it happens that's you know? th that's not true um giant regional wars usually start with efforts at occupation or boots on the ground firing missiles from afar doesn't usually result in the same kind of outcomes and i know this because we've been firing missiles back and forth with iranian proxies for like decades in the middle east without it leading to a conflict with iran sorry just like articles on how the houthis have de facto uh legalized slavery so that the um more than 1,800 Yemenis work as servants and slaves in the residences and workplace of high-ranking Houthi officials. There's there's a lot. It's it's not a good society, man. 
I would not personally want to go and live in Houthi controlled Yemen, you know? Um, that I would not enjoy that in my personal opinion. They have a caste system. It's just I I like the I the idea that they're acting out of humanitarian interest is just so misguided, I feel. You know, it's a little bit of we're backing Israel, Israel's uh, massacring civilians in Gaza, then it's Israel doing tit for tat with Hezbollah in one area, and then it's us, the US bombing Shia militias in Iraq, bombing Shia militias in Syria, Israel taking out a Hezbollah commander here, an Iranian commander here, a Hamas leader in Beirut. I, I know we're missing a couple of specifics here, but typically when we engage with Shia militias in Iraq or Syria, it's because they've also been firing on us. In fact, I believe they've made hundreds of attacks against U.S. bases since October 7th. Again, like, the, the, sort of the, the specifics on this, you know, often get kind of blurry when viewed from afar, but very often, like, you know, pe people people interpret this as like, uh, well, we're just sort of like vindictively killing Muslims for no reason, as opposed to, in many cases, like, they are literally engaging in conflict against us, and uh, defensively, they are, they are shot or, like, retaliation is taken. Root in Lebanon, wildly illegal, you can't just bomb Lebanon, they did. And Didn't then, ISIS take credit for the Lebanon thing? Didn't Israel bomb Lebanon? They, they, yeah, they've done that, yeah. Now we are in a hot... They shouldn't have put their country so close to our bases? They're Shia militias backed by Iran. What are you suggesting? Wait, they're, they're, they've been attacking bases in Iraq. What, what are you suggesting? That Iran has sovereignty over Iraq? Basha was a joke? Okay, okay. Yeah. Hey, hey, how am I supposed to tell... Uh, with, with, with stream being what it's been, you know, hey, come on, you know, um, I was just kidding. Okay. Okay. No, 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 I'm, I'm not mad. It's just like what, you know, given how the stream's been, you're getting twitchy. You're right. I'm getting, getting the shakes over here. You know, I'm getting, I'm seeing ghosts. Or bombing Yemen, completely illegal, completely unconstitutional. Not illegal or unconstitutional. Uh, and for what? We know the answer. <laughs> the, the thing that we're doing it for is to continue to allow Israel to carpet bomb children. No, that's not why we're doing it. It's because it threatens international maritime trade. Israel is perfectly capable of continuing to bomb children, regardless of what the Houthis do. Never been more disgusted than I am right now. And by the way, if you turn on mainstream media, whoo, good luck getting the context. There is not a single Good channel. luck getting the context while listening to lefties, man. I, I feel like you'll get more info reading a CNN article than you'll get from, like, going on Twitter and looking at lefties. Holy shit. Like, at least if you go to a CNN article, you'll get, like, basic details on the thing. Whereas, it, it, like, all it feels like all you'll get from the, like, Twitter lefty takes is, like, you know, um, illegal war exactly like Iraq, invasion of Iraq, it's happening again, we did this, you know, the Houthis were bravely protecting the Palestinian babies, you know, it's like, fuck, God. In mainstream media, that will tell you the very basic thing hey, why is Yemen doing this? Why are they uh, policing and patrolling the Red Sea? Why are they trying to block... You can't... Leaving aside the fact that they're not policing or patrolling the Red Sea, they're just randomly attacking civilian vessels, that's just a lie. What the f*** gives them the authority to police the Red Sea? There's international waters. Well, you can't do... You literally can't do that in accordance with international law. You're not allowed to do that. You can't... Policing international waters to attack civilian vessels... You kid, that's not a thing. <laughs> like, come on. Uh, ships here. I don't understand. Again, they're doing it to try to stop Israel from doing a genocide. Putting economic pressure on them to try to stop them from doing a genocide. Like the USA is? The, the USA is there because ships in international waters are being attacked. And then the US ships got attacked, you know? Past the point, it's kind of on the Houthis. Like, the, the United States is not going over there to attack civilian merchant vessels. At least not to my knowledge. That's why. Now, when you hear that context, it's a lot harder to critique it, isn't it? I'm critiquing And by the way, Hassan Piker was saying on Twitter that uh, he turned on CNN, and they were describing the U.S. illegally bombing Yemen as a de-escalatory action. I wonder why. I wonder—I want—that's crazy, dog. I wonder. I wonder why.